Okay, perfect. It's just the it's just the three of us. It's just the four of us. I think so. Okay, in, the, in your previews, in your previews, um, in no, we, your... Had Alexa, we had Alexa before. Alex actually should join as well. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to share my screen, and while he joins. I'm going to add you guys to a channel that I made just to show you my part. So I'm going to add you, Nick, Luca. Are you guys, do you guys have um, the Slack application open? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Alex? Yes, I do. Perfect. OK, so I just added you to this channel that I made to show you these uh, the notifications. So let me just go a little bit back. Um, OK, so you guys already went through the channels and the, and the other two things. So it's easy for me to now get into notifications. And the idea that uh, is that in Slack, you have a lot of control about when do you get a notification from someone. But what I'm, also what I'm going to show you is that you also have some, you have control on when you, when you want someone to get a notification, you can do it. And so you do it with these things, the add channel, add here, add individual and add everyone. So there are the, the, the flavor of this one is basically how strident your notification is, how many people hear that notification. Um, it goes from add channel and add everyone, which will basically notify every person in the chat or every person in the entire uh, coffee's uh, um, like a Slack server. Two here, which is like uh, where people, you're going to notify only people that are active in Slack right at that time, or the a specific individual. And so this is what I wanted to show you. So add channel and add everyone are the same. You notify absolutely everyone in the channel. Add everyone only works if you are in the general. So the gen every single person that has accepted the invitation to use Slack is part of the general channel. And at everyone is only going to work there. And absolutely everyone will get the notification. Um, the notification is if you have the app open in your phone or in the browser or in your desktop, is going to be a sound, tak, tak, tak. And there's going to be a visual cue that there is something that is uh, attracting your attention. Add channel. It's only it's like everyone, but only to specific channels. So if I say here to uh, in tutorial Andres, if I say add channel, everyone will get a notification. So if you're in if you're in the Slack um, application, I want you to for a moment click on general, just click on general and go there, so that you're no longer in my. If you were in my channel, you're no longer there. So I'm going to say add channel. Come back. So every single one of you should have gotten um, the notification either as a sound or at the very least as a little red uh, dot on my channel. That is the way you can capture the attention of people. So if you just come back to my channel, which is tutorial Andres, and it will be, you will see it looks bold and it has the little thing. Excellent. So, so this, is the, this is actually quite powerful because, but you have to understand a little bit of when to use them, right? So add everyone is something that really um, you want a serve, something that is like coffee's wine. It's add channel. I, it's been a pleasure working for you with you. I'm going to leave the field and do something else. Uh, thank you so much for everything kind of thing. Or add channel, the proposal is due, be uh, like add everyone, sorry. Add everyone, the proposal is due in, in, in two weeks. Please make sure that you send us your parts. Add everyone. Um, we have the review coming or at everyone here is the, 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 re, the reviews, we got them back. So this is kind of the things that is a little bit more specific. So, you know, channels have a specific theme. So you could say at channel, remember that we're going to have a meeting in tomorrow or at channel, please don't forget to send me your CVs 
or ad channel. So this is what ad channel is for. Now, if, if people have their, their application off, when they go back online, they will get the notification. Um, those are things that you will use rarely. The ones that you probably would use more frequently as at here and at individual. So at here is going to ping everyone that is currently online in Slack. Um, so it's like a channel, but if you are asleep and your phone is off or in silence, you will not get that notification at all. Like you will, you will not see it as a little red thing. So you will say at here, is anyone around that could please help me with uh, um, SunPy? Or at here, uh, I need some help uh, visualizing this or understanding this data or at here. So this is kind of like the announcements that you will use for at here. And the last one will be at individual. And this is the one that you probably will um, use the most because this will be like only specific, a specific person or a specific group of people. So for example, I would say at here, well, the typical use that I use it is at, um, I would say at Alex, right? Uh, can you please send me the butterfly diagram? Right, so this is something that Alex will get a notification for whenever he goes back online um, and is going to be waiting for him. And um, so this is kind of like the, what you use, or you can just say add me, right? And Rob, can you please proofread? Or here are my, here is my, here is my text. Can you please, and whatever, dot, 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 right? So you will get notifications and you can, you can add as many people as you want with that ad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you can add as, as, many, as many things as you, as you want. Um, and uh, so that's typically the thing that you will get, um, the, you will use the most, okay? So those are those are when it comes to notifications and just using using them carefully. Um, so you you will just you're just use your judgment as to when and and why to use them. Any questions for that? Okay. The other thing is the threaded responses and the differences between group DMs and 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 um, and channels. So I'm going to go first to DMs and and. Um, and channels. You can always create a direct message for, with multiple people, right? So you can create one with Luca, right? And also add um, Alexei, right? Uh, and this is going to be kind of like more of a kind of like private kind of thing, right? So where you say, hey guys, how did the Senior review go, right? So this is not something that will go in convection or heliosexmology or dynamo. It will be something that is like just the three of us, right? But anytime you consider talking science, you should really, really try to use channels because the idea is to, to by making these conversations about science public, we don't know who may, we may trigger an idea on someone that can jump into the conversation. So people will pay attention to what they want to pay attention. And that's what notifications exist. You can safely ignore everything except your notifications. Uh, but sometimes people get to see a conversation and they chip in. So try not to use group DMs for science discussions that could be of potential interest to everyone. And if you find yourself creating a group that is kind of like have four or five, three or four members, um, when you think about, I'm going to send a message to two people, consider making a channel instead, if it is public. So that's, that's something that is very important because it's going to help. People can join channels, leave channels at their will if they don't, are not interested anymore. So feel free to create as many channels as you want instead of creating many group messages. The other thing is the use of threaded responses. And this is one of the things that make um, Slack so powerful for work, uh, which is that when I said, um, 
hey, Alex, can you please send me the butterfly diagram? Um, as much as possible, when you're answering someone, you should try to thread the response. And this works like this. Here, when you hover over the messages, you get a several, several things. You can save the message, you can share the message, you can add a reaction, and you can start a thread. So anytime you're answering someone, you should try to thread your response. So when you, when you click on thread the response, then it opens its own little sub window. And this, you can judge, the, depending on the importance, you can either respond only on the thread or for the entire challenge. So for example, Alex would say, when do you need it for? This is something that I guess uh, only I really care about specifically in timing. So it can go into that thread, not the entire channel, doesn't need to hear that. And, and he could have said, add Andreas, right? when do you need it for? And I will say, oh, can you, is it possible for this, for tomorrow? And then you can always also take a part of a thread and send it to the channel, which is very powerful because then suppose that he's done with the butterfly diagram. And so he just says, I'm going to add it from your, from my computer. Um, and let's see if I can find a butterfly diagram, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to send the magnetogram. And he will say, here it is. And you say, also sent to the channel. When you say, also sent to the channel, it will appear both in the thread and in the channel. And this is important because some you can take things out of threads if you consider that they are of relevance to the to the people in the channel. And this is very so plots, for example, yes, a plot of the butterfly diagram of the data that we're all working together is something that I think is worth being in the channel. Um, and you know, when in doubt, send it to the channel. The important thing is to thread it because any time any conversation can be retaken. So. A month from now, someone needs a butterfly diagram. And so they can go and look for this conversation. You, you can click on them, on the conversation. You can find all the conversation and you say, hey, Alexei, is it possible to do that butterfly diagram again, but including hail and anti-hail regions? And you can leave it in the thread alone, pinging Alexei, or you can put it back in the channel and say, can, can I have it? Or is not, can you make it, can you make it with, um, so that it is color by plainly? And so you can send this to the channel so that everyone knows that this is happening. And then when Alex answers, he will send it to the channel again. So use this as much as possible so that you can always go back to these conversations and trace them back to the to the thing and the last thing um oh you can you can edit messages so that's one of the things that makes it makes a slack more powerful than an email right sometimes you send the email and then it's like ah right i sh i forgot to add this or i forgot to add that and this is more informal, like a conversation, and you can edit your messages, and it's fine, anytime. So, so you can just take your message, and here in the little buttons, you can say, um, yeah, I have a friend, or like the, I, like, um, what's the name of the, of the guy that like, the, that that is at the top of NASA. Anyway, whatever. Like uh, you can say, yeah, this person is actually colorblind. So you can add that, that little that, that that context later, or you can just. So if you send a message and you're, ah, it's okay. You can always edit it, and it's fine. And that is something that is quite nice. Um, sometimes you go back, you read the conversation, and you felt like there was a piece of information missing. You can do it. And if you send a message and you regret it, you can delete it. It's fine too. So. 
like maybe you were snappy or you know you were angry that time or whatever and you send a message and you see it again and you're like oh my god just see what mm. let me understand that so let's say you send a message then you edit because you didn't like something so the mm -hmm. previous message will be overwritten yes so let me just do it right now but what happens if somebody actually already got the message ah yeah that they already saw the message okay. but um yes but, but the, whatever is saved in the server it will be the final i mean people word. will see like if, if i edit this um my friend is colorblind Um, you can see that it has been edited. Let me see. Maybe here. Um, okay, no. In, in this, let me just actually maybe. Okay, no, I can see. I can. Maybe you guys can see. Sometimes you can see. I think you can see that it has been edited, but you don't. You don't have access to the old versions. So, but it's fine. I mean, I think that's one of the things that makes Slack also so nice it's that is forgiving like uh it's you know sometimes you forget something it's not it you still delete the message it's okay sometimes it doesn't add anything delete it maybe someone saw it maybe no one saw it but it's okay you can delete it so that's something that is uh nice it's a little dangerous because it may invalidate people's responses to the to your unedited message <laughs> yes i mean Overall, like if we are sticking to the guidelines and um, you, you, I mean, edits, you can abuse edits, of course. But I think that in good faith, most people edit a message and there is a good reason for that. Like they forgot to add something, they have a typo, they can express themselves better. Um, so I think that you gain much more by being able to edit the messages than what you risk uh, of someone trying to gaslight someone or something like this. This I have never seen this happen. So, so, so that I, so basically, I think what I want to encourage you is that Slack, you can create as many channels as you want, edit your messages. It's very liberating. Um, and the last thing is uh, emojis, emojis. So you you when you think about emojis, you you kind of like they're kind of fun, they're kind of silly and. They, they are more humorous than not, right? That's the way you, we think of emojis. And that is true in Slack. But they serve also a communicational purpose that work-wise is very powerful. So for example, I can say, Nick, please don't forget to send me your CV, right? And Nick can just go hover over the message, put at reaction and say, okay, right? So when you react to messages, sometimes it can be like, yeah, got it. Um, and you don't need to type anything. You don't need to add anything to the channel necessarily that like, that is a perfectly fine response to my uh, thing. And the nice thing is that, yeah, exactly. You can also fool around. You can combine these with fooling around and people feel free to, like, we do this all the time, like 100% uh, or it's like, yeah, exactly. You can add as many things as you want and I will be able to see this one as well as the other ones. And it's fine and it's actually super fun. And you can like, uh, like add anything that you want. Like uh, to, there is a huge amount of things and it is actually quite a powerful form of expression because you can start giving nuance to your things um, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, like you can just, or you can like, uh, so this is use emojis because these are, I encourage you to use emojis because they are quite powerful. And they also kind of like relax the whole setting. But in an email you're like, dear, Luca, I hope this email finds you well. Um, this, this, and this, and that, right? But in Slack, it's like, hey, look at this. And, um, and it, you just put things, and then everyone just chips in. And then there is like a chain of emojis. And it's perfectly fine, because it fulfills both the serious and the funny component of it. Um, so that's the, the, the other thing. Of course, try to stay on message on each in, uh, specific um, 
like I think the important thing is to to kind of like try to keep message of each channel. There are a, there is a channel for random. So if you really want to share something kind of silly, this is the place, or something that maybe you're of interest. And you can uh, pick specific people. Like um, right, I I I went in Italy and I ate something and I thought of Luca, and so I put it in random, and I pink Luca. Hey Luca, look where I am, kind of thing. And this, this is also something that helps build this community. So the last thing that I want to do is show you an example of, I use Slack super extensively. Um, and so I have this project um, that I have, and I just wanted to show you kind of like a thread where all these things happen, right? So one of us is like, here is a full analysis of uncertainty when infers something 200 passes, blah, blah, blah. And he, the person shares the plots, right? Um, and so here it, they explain, those graphs show a 2D histogram of the joint distribution, blah, blah, blah. And then people started responding, right? So if you go to the thread, the first message is me, wonderful, let us know how it goes, don't sweat it too much, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to do this also to kind of encourage everyone and kind of like acknowledge publicly the, what he did. Then there is a person that sent a message only to the thread but ping him. Hey, Xavier, what is the difference between the MC inference and the direct inference here, right? And so he starts putting things in the things that as he thinks about it. He edited the message, you can see this. Um, we don't know what it was before, but maybe he forgot something or he made an edit. Um, and then he, as he started thinking about things, he was just adding things to the thread. But then he found one that it was like important that I think he thinks is important to share with everyone else. So he sends this to the channel where it says, it seems natural that MC inference gives a lower bound to the variance or am I way out of here? And so you can follow this conversation and share papers, right? Where you can, in Slack, when you share a link, it, it gets like a nice, like a uh, thing, like, the, like, in, like, in, like in Facebook, where you like see that there is a link to follow. And so there is a conversation that goes on and on on this thread. And then this person is like, oh, I'm having a part, hard time finding a related citation, but look at this and sends it to the channel because he thinks this is something that people may be interested in. And so there is the conversation continues and then um, this person finally found what he was looking for. And then some, some of us are like, amazing. And we put the heart, right? Um, and so it's like, oh, this person that we know had a paper and we say, oh, great. And we put the emoji. And then I say, hey, Xavi, it may be worth reaching out to that person to make sure that person has maybe valuable suggestions. And you go on and so forth. And then if you look at this in my own kind of like main thread, um, you can see this conversation, those graphs, those graphs. So you can see whatever we sent to the channel appears here as those graphs. Um, and sometimes maybe there is like someone is like, hey, what's the best way of sharing notebooks? But then someone goes back to the other conversation. So you, that's what the important thing about threading. So you, you can follow those threads like this. So that's basically it. Um, I don't know if you guys have any other questions. Well, maybe not a question, but um, uh, just, just notice. I, I, was, I was trying to, to, to see where this uh, notifications appear. And so apparently, I don't know, everybody probably found the same, but uh, if there is a personal communication, so, all communications pop up as, as a as a you know window you know brief brief uh, notice. But then if you try to find them on the left side in the menu at the top there are threads. That's where your personal communications actually you know the the record of those. You can you can go and revisit them, right? Yes. If 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 the, those were copied to to the group, then then they are on the channel. So those those ones that you send to several of us. They are on the channel uh, tutorial address, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then at the very bottom, where there are direct messages, mm -hmm. again, there are some of them, not all of them, but some of them end up here as well. So yes. it's not, at, at the beginning, it wasn't obvious where to look uh, for these messages that briefly pop up and, and I see them, but then they disappear. And if you want to reread them, there are, there are several places you can find them. Thank you, Alexei. Yeah, this is very important. So if it is in a channel, it will appear on the channels. If it is a personal, a, a personal, like a direct message, it will appear here. 
And yes, you can look at threads, but I believe the threads will not have the private ones. Yeah, this is this will be only in channels. Mm -hmm. Your 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 direct messages will not appear in thread. Threads is also nice. There are there are threads that uh, if you have been pinged in a thread, you can also see the latest additions to things that you have been part of. Um, so you can see uh, there is a thread here that I had with uh, in the other uh, breakout room, and yet in another breakout room. And here is one of the of this presentation that Che made with 16 more replies. So you can you can find these things in threads. Now one thing that maybe actually I don't know if uh, if I start typing something to Alexei and um, Luca, it and I change to a channel, um, it could appear in dra in your drafts. All right. Well, let's see. Yeah. Oh, but this change. I think they updated this, so you can. It will appear both here in the in the uh, and it's kind of uh, if you. Have your application open you can start typing something and it will stay there so the hello is not going to go anywhere if you answer another um it gets saved into the tracks so it is a really really it's both fun um but it's actually work wise super powerful uh tool for collaboration um and for us as a very large center is a very way. It's a very nice way of being connected, and for us to control how people can reach us, and and how we can keep track of things that we are truly interested in. So you have a lot of control over what gets, where do you get notified, and you can get a notification every time that someone sends something to a channel, or you can get a notification only when you get a address directly. And so I think by default, our own Slack server is such that you will only get notified if there is a direct address. But you can always change those. And, and that way it becomes like a super powerful way of keeping track of a project that is large and seeing things. And also kind of like a placeholders, put placeholders, put material that people may be interested on. And it's relaxed, right? You are. It, this is the place to do these kinds of things. It's not. It's the place to have many channels. It's the place to have messages, to have fun, but uh, to have things that people may be relevantly interested on, and let them choose, right? You, you have to be mindful with add channel and add everyone, and even add here. But with your notifications, it's fine. Like the other things, you can just ping people. So, so anyway, that's basically it. Let's go back to the, um, to the main room. <laughs>